What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a deck profile that premiered in a Yu-Gi-Oh! anime movie and this deck is yes a rogue deck however it's a really really fun OTK deck in the TCG and this deck is Cubix. It's a deck that I feel like a lot of people forgot about but it's still a very powerful and fun deck and in this video I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Cubix in the January 2023 format. Now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like like this one here on the channel i want to focus a lot on deck profiles that people are not really doing on a day-to-day -day basis and on top of that we do do a lot of entertaining videos i got a lot planned for 2023 so i hope you guys enjoyed today's deck profile with that being said let's get right into the deck profile all right so i know i said this in the intro but this is a rogue deck keep that in mind this is definitely a deck that you don't see very often however if you do want to play cubic i think this is a really fun way to build it in today's format and just go in for the otk every single time you go against your opponent so that's something I think is still really really fun so let's get right into the deck profile here we are starting off with three crimson nova the dark cubic lord we all know why this is a three of it's the boss monster of the deck you have to reveal three cubic cards with different names from your hand to special summon it it can attack twice and then at the end phase you do 3,000 burn damage so this card essentially is your otk card and then you're going to try to burn your opponent if you don't go in for the otk that turn so that's why this card is definitely a three of you can't not be playing three of this and the really cool thing is it's not a once per turn summon so if you open let's say two crimson nova and three other cubic names you can summon multiple crimson nova and then that can sometimes help you push for game as well but keep in mind that the burn effect is a hard ones per turn so the summon isn't but the burn effect is so you're only going to be burning for 3k however crimson nova double of them on the board being able to attack multiple times is still really powerful then you're playing three dooza dooza is your best normal summon of the deck it can be normal or special summon to get its effect off and when it is summoned you can send a cubic card from your deck to the graveyard the really cool thing is a lot of your spells and traps have really powerful effects when they're in the graveyard so you're actually going to want to be sending them as soon as possible whether they're going to be able to get cards back to your hand or search them from your deck or do different things getting these cards to your graveyard is still very very powerful and then on top of that this card does gain attack based off of how many monsters you have in your graveyard so it can be kind of a big beat stick for you three v gem v gem is very important where if you actually don't otk your opponent this is kind of like a stall card it puts cubic counters on the field for you and monsters with cubic counters cannot attack and have their effects negated and then on top of that it can't be destroyed by battle so if you're not otking your opponent and if you find yourself in a situation where you have to protect yourself v gem is one of the better cards then we're playing one buster one of the indiora as well as one of the Giera. now i'm going to be honest with you you're never really summoning these these are just extra names for you that you need to use off of your crimson nova so you can reveal them they're names that you're going to be searching through different effects so most of the time these are just straight up just names they don't do anything for you however i will say this this card can come up once in a while specifically this one you can send a cubic monster you control to the graveyard to special summon this so it does let you special summon itself you're never really really going to want to use that other than the fact that if it's special summoned you can inflict 800 damage to your opponent and sometimes if you're going into time this is a very powerful card because you can just summon it and then do some burn damage in like let's say game three and then boom you go into time right so it's one of those cards i know it kind of sucks but that's why you're playing this one it's one of the better ones we're playing two summoner monk summoner monk is very powerful of course because this is how you get access to your doza if you don't draw your doza now summoner monk is not a three of in the deck because again you'd rather just normal summon the doza anyways so this is kind of like your fourth and fifth copy of doza you have to also discard a spell for summoner monk to activate now you guys can see we play a lot of spells and again discarding some of your cubic spells is not a bad thing but again you're gonna need the two cards for summoner monk it does give you access to rank four which is nice but again not the most consistent dooza is obviously a three of this is kind of extra copies of dooza right and then we're playing three bestial magnumu as well as three bestial druiswurm this is kind of self-explanatory in a format like today's where it's all tier limits i think you need to be playing cards that beat the tier limit matchup and these cards do that for you and on top of that this is an otk deck and what do otk decks like doing the most putting monsters on the board so you can push for a lot of damage so not only is your crimson nova going to be able to do a lot of damage when you're summoning this it can attack twice it does burn damage on the end phase all that good stuff you also will have the bestial monsters on the board for you which will put up extra damage but they're also going to act as disruptions so now if you're going up against a tail limit player which again is the best deck but you can also be going up against a lot of rogue decks that actually lose to the bestial stuff something that comes to mind is like hero right like hero is one of those decks that really needs the malicious in the graveyard some of their monsters in the graveyard and if you just use a bestial monster you kind of stop some of their combos same thing with sprite i know against sprite you can summon these cards as well so there's a lot of different situations where these come up and they are very powerful when they do come up so for that reason getting extra monsters jewish moon can also be sent to the graveyard to break your opponent's boards so you're playing the six bestials now i was originally playing five with three summoner monk but like i said earlier with summoner monk i don't think you need to be playing three so i like the six bestial monsters i don't think i change this up and then for the spell cards here we are playing the one harpy's feather duster as well as the three foolish burial goods what did i say earlier you want your spells and traps in the graveyard they're 
they're very powerful for you when they're in the graveyard. So Foolish Burial Goods essentially helps you get them to the graveyard as fast as possible. And because it's a hard ones per turn, what's really nice is if you do draw multiple Foolish Burial Goods, and a lot of other decks, it doesn't really do anything. But if you draw this with a Summoner Monk, then at least you can pitch it off the Summoner Monk, right? So you still have multiple forms of access, even though you're playing three, you don't want to draw two. But if you do draw two, you have ways to get rid of it and still make it useful, right? So that's why we're playing three goods. Playing three Extravagance, you don't really go into your extra deck all that often. And so for that reason, I think Extravagance is just the best draw card that you can play in this deck. Unlike Prosperity, does it make you do half damage? And that's, of course, really important in an OTK deck. And then on top of that, drawing two cards helps you draw into more cubic names so that you can summon your Crimson Nova. So that's why I like to play the three Potter Extravagance. We're playing three Cubic Dharma. Dharma has two really cool effects. The first effect doesn't synergize super well with Extravagance. However, keep in mind, you're not always going to have Extravagance in your hand. So this is another form of draw power for you. What you can do is you can send a Cubic card from your hand to the graveyard, and then you can draw a card. That's really good as well, because again, if you're sending some of your other cubic names that have good graveyard effects, then you're going to be getting draw a card, but then you're also going to be getting the plus off of the graveyard effects, right? So Dharma is really good in that sense. But on top of that, you can banish this card from your graveyard and then target a cubic monster in your graveyard, add it back to your hand. Why that's really good is because you can add back extra Duzas, you can add back the V gems, and then you have more names in your hand to essentially use for Crimson Nova. So that's why I think this card is really good, especially even if you draw two of them, you activate one, pitch the second one so that you can draw. And then if you already have a monster in your graveyard, you banish the second one, add the monster back to your hand, and then now you're just replenishing your resources. So that's why I think Cubic Dharma is definitely a three of in the deck. We're playing three Cubic Wave. Cubic Wave has a really cool effect where you target a Cubic monster you control and a monster your opponent controls. Your monster doubles the attack, your opponent's monsters half his attack. Again, just helps you go for OTK. And then Wave also has a really cool effect in the graveyard where you can banish it as well as any number of cubic monsters in your graveyard. Then you can target monsters on the field up to the number of cubic monsters that you banish. And then you can place a cubic counter on all of them. And all monsters with cubic counters cannot attack, cannot activate their effects. So that's really, really powerful as well. Three Cubic Karma. Cubic Karma is a really powerful card because it lets you send the V gems to your graveyard. V gem being in your graveyard is really good for a multitude of reasons. One of the reasons, like I said earlier, was with your Dharma. You can add it back to your hand. So again, you're always replenishing resources. But then on top of that, your monster that you're targeting when you're sending the V gems, you will gain 800 attack for each V gem you send. So this is just going to boost your Duza, going to boost your Crimson Nova, help you go for OTK. And then it also has another really cool effect. Doesn't come up as often, but if you special summon a V gem by any means, you can just half your opponent's life points. Again, just helping you OTK that much easier. And then you can banish this card from your graveyard and add a cubic monster from your deck to your hand. So this is a really powerful card as well. Again, sending it off of Foolish Burial Goods means that this card essentially is going to be a cubic name for you because you activate Foolish Burial, send your Karma, banish Karma, Karma, add a cubic monster so foolish essentially equals a cubic monster in your hand which is really really powerful and then we have three unification as well as one cubic ascension now unification is your fusion trap this is a card that gets you into your big boss monster you're never really going to be using the fusion effect you don't really need to the main effect in this is that if this card is in your graveyard you can banish this card special summon a level four lower cubic monster from your hand or deck ignoring its summoning conditions that means you can summon these bad boys over here that you won't really be summoning off of their own effects you can summon the Duza, you can summon the V gem and again if you're summoning a v gem with something like cubic karma on the field then you're getting the cubic karma effect and you're all that good stuff so it synergizes really well that's why we're playing the three of this this card getting into your graveyard it's the thing that you want to prioritize with foolish burial goods sending this to the graveyard is very very powerful and on top of that the banish effect for this is not once per turn and then we're playing the one ascension ascension has a pretty cool effect if your opponent declares an attack you special summon a v gem from your deck so that's really cool because v gem can't be destroyed by battle kind of protection for you but that's just a trap effect the banish effect is really important here because you can banish it from your graveyard special summon a v gem from your hand deck or graveyard and then what ends up happening is if your opponent controls a monster you can summon up to two more v gems again synergizing really well with karma but then summoning multiple v gems means now you can link climb you can do different things and then so that's why the ascension is really powerful it's just a really powerful one up in the deck that you can send off goods if you already have unification in the graveyard again doza can send this doza can send unification so that's really really powerful this deck synergizes really really well together and again if you're just able to summon the crimson nova because especially in today's format where decks aren't really putting up a lot of negates all you need to do even if they have monsters on their board you're not getting rid of their monsters by card effects so you just have to be able to summon big monsters attack over them you'll do the 3000 burn you're in a really good spot and you have the bestial monsters as well to stop your opponent from doing a lot of big plays so i think this deck just synergizes really well and i'm honestly just very excited that you can actually play this deck kind of competitively it's still a rogue deck but you know if you wanted to play this, this is a really good way to play it now just before we get into the extra deck i do want to say one thing the lightning storms and the regeki here okay you guys see this in my side deck why are we playing this well this deck can kind of struggle against a deck like Fluandries. Tier Limits, yes, is the best deck of the format. Fluandries is still a very powerful deck as well. So when you're going second, if you're going against the Fluandries matchup, going games two and games three, you're always going to want to side out the six Bestials and side in the six 
six right here because these six are very powerful against the Flowandries matchup. This getting rid of the barrier statue, getting rid of the empen is very powerful, getting rid of the back row is very powerful. So six for six right here against the Flowandries. Just wanted to mention that to you guys because sometimes you know every deck can't be built to beat every single meta deck. So what we want to do is we want to specialize the main deck for one and then specialize the side deck for another. The main deck here is specialized to beat the Telemans matchup. The side deck you really want to specialize to beat the Flowandries matchup. All right. Just wanted to put that out there. Moving on to the extra deck here. It's not very important. You rarely go into it, but we're playing one Crimson Nova Trinity. This is your fusion monster. If you guys randomly get into this, I mean, that's really insane. Probably not going to happen though. We're playing two Dweller, two Baguska. If you ever make this with Summoner Monk and Duza, you have some good first turn plays here. You have the Wallow because you're playing the Bestials. The one number 27, this can come up as a rank four because if you're attacking and destroying an opponent's monster by battle, then you have access to something like uh, Gustav. Gustav can help you burn, of course. But the thing is, remember how I said you can summon multiple Crimson Novas? Sometimes you can just overlay two Crimson Novas into a Gustav to go for game. You also have access to something like Libe if you're going into Gustav, another OTK machine. So that's why we're playing these. Then we're playing two Dark, one Pentasteg, and one Unicorn. These are cards essentially that you can make with your Bestials, with your extra V-Jams, and then at least you'll get some nice effects off of them. So the extra deck, again, is not super, super important. These cards, again, you're not really going into that often, but when you do, it can be very powerful. You guys can play a little bit more Link Monsters if you want to cut Baguska down to one or Dweller down to one. But we are playing Extravagant, so I like to play at least two of everything that's like important and then the rest of it is kind of just utility so the extra deck don't worry about too much i think this is a pretty good extra deck you guys can do different things with it but the main deck here i think is really cool and it's very very fun the fact that we can see cubic and compete with it in today's format so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take on cubics for january 2023 now keep in mind what i said earlier it is still a rogue deck but it's very much specialized to beat the tier light matchup. Games two and games three, if you need to go against the Flawandries matchup, you have Raigekis, you have Lightning Storms. You have a lot of cards in the side deck that you can put in to beat the Flawandries matchup. So I think this deck is very, very fun. It is the anime movie OTK deck, a deck that has seen not a lot of play recently, but I think it's very, very fun. If you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh! content just like this one. I'm very excited for 2023. It's going to be a great year. Thank you guys all for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.